What, the coffee? No, the weather. Oh, yes. Very cold. It's, I don't ever remember it being 12 degrees down here, getting that cold. I remember one year, I've heard people talk about the Red River freezing over. Yeah. But, I don't know. Hey everybody, it's Wednesday night. Thanks for uh, joining us around the table. We're, we're glad you're here. We're actually starting a, a little little early, about a minute, 30 seconds early. So if you don't have your coffee yet, get your coffee. If you don't drink coffee, drink tea or water or whatever, soda, Dr. Pepper. How are you feeling, Janet? Hopefully she's doing about doing better. There's Carolyn and Janet and Tom. The gang is showing up. <laughs> so hey, um, we've got some wintry weather on the way. Now, if you don't live in Louisiana, this is not a big deal to you probably if you live north. Mm -hmm. But for us, this is a really big deal because um, we've already had some cold weather. And we're running out of clothes to wear. We're gonna we're gonna have to start wearing the same clothes over and over again because we're not used to it being this cold for this long. So, uh, happy Wednesday, Barbara. Thanks for being here tonight. Good to see you. Hey, Landa, all the way from Montana. Landa and Montana rhyme. Did you did you know yeah. that? I just noticed that. Janet, I'm so glad you're feeling better. We've been praying for you. Hey, Missy. Good to have you here tonight. Woo. I hope you're staying warm wherever y'all are at. There's the Youngs, Erwin and Anna. Great to have y'all here. The rain makes here. it even colder. It makes it feel even colder. It is raining yeah. outside, mm -hmm. isn't it? So yeah. So we've been talking about some um, some pretty pretty. I think it's pretty interesting stuff about um, the ins and outs of salvation according to the Bible. There's Rose. Hey, Rose. Gwen, all the way from Shreveport. <laughs> She comes from a faraway city <laughs> across the river. Um, but we've been talking about some stuff like justification, sanctification, some pretty um, $5 theological words that, <laughs> you know, may not mean a lot until we understand what those words really signify in the definitions. Mm -hmm. And so, so we've been working through this and uh, what all this means for us as followers of Jesus, uh, because... I, you know, I, I don't, we want to acquire knowledge that we can apply to our lives because if knowledge is not practical, what use is it? Mm -hmm. You know, what good is it? It needs to be helpful. It yeah. needs to help you in your daily walk, I think. Yeah. So we're going to be in Romans chapter five tonight. Um, we left off last week talking about the whole way that the Holy Spirit works and sanctification and, and helping us become more and more like Jesus every day. And I think you made some great statements last week. Do you remember any of them? Not really. <laughs> you slept since then, huh? Yes, I have. Uh, been a little bit since then. So the book of Romans is really cool because it's, it's written by the Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. and he talks a lot about grace. He explains grace in amazing ways. Mm -hmm. And he has to deal with a lot of um, spiritual baggage that some people have, um, mm -hmm. baggage from their religious heritage. He has to deal with all of that in, in teaching about grace because this is something new as he's writing about it mm -hmm. and, and the way that he's writing about it. Hey, French, is good to have you all here. And the Werners, there's the Werners from Minden, Louisiana. So in Romans 5, Paul uh, makes this uh, contrast. Hey, there's Linda from California. Good to have you, Linda. He makes a contrast between Jesus and between Adam. And of course, all right, give us a little synopsis of, of who is Adam, according well, he to the was Bible. The first um, man, God created the first man, Adam. Hey, factors. And he was um, without sin, and he was innocent. You talking about Adam? Adam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Until he ate the fruit. That was he wasn't supposed to, and that opened his eyes, and then he knew good from evil, right? Yeah. So he was the first person to sin. Hey, Chuck and Amy. Hey, Neesmiths. 
Yeah, so when you go back to the book of Genesis and you read about the creation account, and as the narrative unfolds, we're introduced to Adam and Eve, and God basically says, you can do whatever you want, but I don't want you to do one thing. There's this one tree, and I don't want you to eat the fruit from this tree. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like when you tell your kids not to do something, you, you know what's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. How many of you were never tempted by something until you were told you couldn't? You couldn't. <laughs> right, exactly. And then it's like, oh my goodness, I want that. Exactly. So, so there was a result of what they did, and it, it changed things as far as um, life here on planet Earth, mm -hmm. and it introduced um, a, a lot of stuff. You can read about that in Genesis uh, chapter two, chapter three, uh, about what exactly happened. So. In, in the book of Romans, Paul is, is drawing a contrast between Adam and how Adam made a wrong decision and what, what the results, the consequences were for everybody that follows. Right. And he's drawing that contrast with Jesus in Romans chapter 5. So mm -hmm. uh, before we get there, let's I want to pick up in verse 6 with a really amazing verse that maybe you've heard before. Um, so let's go ahead and look at verses 6 through 8 of Romans chapter 5. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who was especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. I really love that verse. And the thing that sticks out to me that I love the most is that he sent Jesus while we were still sinners. We didn't have to get it right for him to send his son. Yeah. And he was he loved us even while we were still sinners. Yeah, he, he took the initiative. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, salvation is a God thing. Mm -hmm. uh, God takes the initiative. So really, if, if we think about it, um, God finds us. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we would call a theocentric view, mm -hmm. where it's, it's focused on God. When we talk about, well, I found God, and you, you know, God leads us mm -hmm. through the journey, but that's a very egocentric view. That's, that's putting myself first. But it's, the Bible says that, that God is the one who reaches out to us first. He loves us first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a beautiful picture, the fact that he, he's looking for us, that he wants a relationship with us. That's, that's a beautiful picture to me. I like that better than saying that I found God or I was searching for God, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That he was searching for me. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in these verses that, that you just read, Mindy, um, we're reminded that, you know, justified, being made right, mm -hmm. declared righteous, um, having the, our, the charges dropped against us. Yeah. This is all the result of Jesus. Well, also that verse says we were utterly helpless. Mm -hmm. We couldn't. We couldn't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves. We are utterly helpless. Mm -hmm. Totally, we totally need God, and we need Jesus. Yeah. Hey, Joanne. Good to have you here tonight. So this is this is really cool. Um, when you look at the Christian faith, and you know, I, I think I've shared before some of the reasons why I decided to stay in the Christian faith, and every single reason revolves around Jesus. Every yes. single one. Me too. So you look at the next verses. Uh, we'll go down. Let's go down to verses ten through eleven. Um, and, and there's something interesting that is done in this verse. Um, since we've been made right in God's sight by the by the blood of Christ, and that's a reference to the crucifixion of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, God will certainly do what? Or He'll save us from God's condemnation. Yeah. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. So saying that we are friends of God, that's, that's beautiful too. But that was, that was the beginning. That was the beginning relationship that Adam and Eve had with God, walking with him, and they had that relationship with him, and then sin came along and ruptured it, ruptured that relationship. Yeah. Uh, trivia question. Who was called a friend of God in the Old Testament? Hmm. Do, do, I do, do, know this. Do, do, do. 
you have to phrase your answer in the form of a question. Oh, I can't remember. I can't believe I've forgotten this. I don't know. You have to tell me. Starts with an A, ends with an M. He was married to Sarah. Abraham. Abraham. <laughs> you basically right. gave it to me. Oh, you got it. Hey, Naomi. <laughs> Naomi from uh, California is watching, too. Mm -hmm. Good to have you. That's kinfolk right there. <laughs> so the point that he's making in, in verses 10 and 11, one of the points is that, okay, look, if, if Christ has reconciled us to God while we were enemies, right? We, mm -hmm. um, how much more will he do now that we're friends? Ooh, I've never thought about it like that before. Yeah, because you think about our human relationships that we will, you know, we'll do things more for somebody that maybe we consider a friend. We we need to be treat everybody fairly and equally, but we tend to show favoritism to people that we're friends with. Um, and so we just kind of put God in that position too, but that's not how God treats us. But the fact that he sent Jesus while we were still sinners, but now Jesus' death makes us friends with him now imagine how much he's going to do for us yeah that's amazing that's a cool way to put it yeah jesus is pretty amazing yeah <laughs> so so we have this relationship now and um that this made possible because of jesus and so when you go down to verse 12 um paul starts fleshing out this contrast uh, between adam who the book of genesis tells us first man and Jesus. And he says, when Adam sinned, what entered into the world? Sin entered into the world. Yeah. So how would you define sin? What, what is sin? Hmm. It's breaking God's law. That's how I would yeah. put it. Yeah, doing the wrong thing, the wrong missing thing. the mark. Yeah. Um, I think James... Uh, but sin isn't just doing the wrong thing. Sin is also when you can do the right thing and you don't do it. Yeah, that's what James, mm -hmm. uh, de how James defines sin yeah. in the New Testament. If you know what the right thing to do is and you don't do it, for you it's sin. Right. So Yeah. So, yeah. So, so Adam made a, a bad choice called sin. He, he did something he was not supposed to do, and there were results, there were consequences that followed. Mm -hmm. And so one of those is death. That was not part of the original design. Mm -hmm. uh, when when Adam and Eve sinned, relationships changed. The relationship mm -hmm. they had with each other changed. Their relationship with God changed. Their relationship, this is pretty staggering, their relationship with creation, the earth, mm -hmm. changed yes. as a result of that. And, and you can read all, all about that in Genesis chapter 3. Mm -hmm. But there were some massive consequences that followed that, that we, uh, we've borne. Uh, because um, uh, sin's still in the world. Evidently, from when you read those verses, it sounds to me like before the fall, that childbearing was not supposed to be painful. That's that's the way I read that. If there was childbearing, I mean... Well, that's that's true, too. I, I don't know. But because of the fall, so many things changed. So many things yeah. became harder. There's so many things I don't quite don't understand. understand. I don't either. So... I've got a list of questions, but I think that when I'm finally able to ask those questions, You're they not won't matter. Care. Mm -mm. And so I want to know now. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do when there's no, when people don't even know about this law? Say like um, you're talking about God's law. What do you do with people who who've never heard about this? Can they can they break God's law? Well, I think that um, that's where Paul's going to next. We have that innate sense in us of right and wrong. Um, that we think, even as, as children, well, that's something good, or you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't hurt me. So we have that sense of that certain things are good, certain things are bad. Mm -hmm. I think that's innate within us. How much of that do you think is taught? Um, some of it is taught. Because, I mean, as children, the, um, the first the way that they act is they're, they're selfish, right? They're just going to try to conserve everything that they have so it's a selfish need but i think at the same time they also think you shouldn't hurt me mm. right you shouldn't you shouldn't do that mm. what about y'all watching um what do you think did you learn what was right and wrong 
was there something innate within you? You know, you knew certain things were wrong, or how much of that were you taught? Um, go ahead and leave some comments. I'm really curious to mm -hmm. to hear what what y'all are thinking um, tonight. Yeah. Because Paul is going to now get into this very question, and so while we're waiting for your comments, um, we're going to go ahead and read uh, verses 13 and 14, and uh, listen to what what he says here. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there was not yet any law to break. Still, everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol, a representation of Christ who was yet to come. This is talking about before God gave Moses the Ten Commandments and, and the entire law, correct? Well, if that if that's true, then Adam mm -hmm. didn't sin, but God had already given a, a, a law that one one mm -hmm. restriction, right? Right. Yeah. So I think he's dealing with the question that people ask: um, What about people who aren't aware of God's law? And you talked about the innate, mm -hmm. yeah. which um, you know Romans one he talks about that creation reveals God's law in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, that we can learn some things about God outside of outside of the bible mm -hmm. um so yeah there there's one you know joanne says i think i was taught mm -hmm. and um yeah and, and that's one of the points that paul makes uh, in romans he says um the law taught me what sin was and he said mm -hmm. but the bad thing about that was it made me want to sin mm -hmm. so um yeah naomi says my parents taught me mm -hmm. yeah i think a lot of us can say that 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 we learned a sense of right and wrong from our parents. Mm -hmm. So there's a sense that we, we sin without Adam, right? Uh, because we're each responsible for what we do, but sometimes the consequences of what we do affect people um, oh, yeah. generations after us. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I think you see that sin existed uh, from Adam to Moses before the Ten Commandments were given. Mm -hmm. and. And so uh, we all kind of have inherited, not inherited, that's a bad word. Um, we're dealing with the effects of what Adam yeah. and Eve did. Yeah. Creation change, relationships changed. Um, yet yeah, Landa says it's a combination of being taught, God-given conscience, mm -hmm. um, cultural norms. Mm -hmm. That's a great point because uh, every culture has various norms, right? Right. ethical ethics you know what what's right what's wrong yeah um and so now oh what do we do in a, in a society where things are, are viewed in a more relative sense yeah like what that's may be wrong for you is not wrong for me that's challenging uh, that is that's really interesting um but i think it's something we need to be talking about mm -hmm. um so um is there an absolute sense here uh can a clear-cut right and wrong you know, it's, but that's like that question is is there such a thing as absolute truth and someone says no and you say do you absolute is that absolute you know <laughs> um, it's the uh, huh. so anyway <laughs> so but I think one interesting point that I read some, as someone was trying to extrapolate some meaning from this text and they were they raised the question okay who do we know in the world who is without a, a knowledge of right and wrong hmm. without the law infants right so at least uh, in the in the part of the, the christian faith that we espouse we don't believe that that babies are born in sin we don't mm -hmm. believe that that babies can sin right. um, what about um special needs children i would think it was the same thing yeah yeah yeah. So someone brought up a point. Said, "Well, what if what if he's talking about these folks, folks in in these situations?" Hmm. Um, yeah. So, because you know, I heard growing up in in my upbringing something called the age of accountability. Did any of y'all ever hear this? Mm -hmm. And it was related to baptism. That yeah. um, there there's a an age that you a child doesn't really understand, and so there's no need for baptism because there's no sin. But then when that child reaches the age of accountability, mm -hmm. have you ever heard that? Yes, I have. Yeah. And, and I think it's different for every child because 
children just mature at different rates. So you can't really say that's one particular age. Yeah, I think um, the maturity you had when you were 21, I didn't have till I was 40. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so, but it, it, it's interesting when you think about that. And, um, and of course, as you know, we get older, we, we really develop a sense of right and wrong and, mm -hmm. and what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Yeah. So what's the difference between Adam and Jesus? And that's where Paul goes next in, in verse uh, 15. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. He, he draws this contrast, mm -hmm. you know, Adam's sin and Christ's gift. Yeah. Uh, so sin brought death. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it disrupted the creation order. And I don't even know if when Adam and Eve were originally created, if, if they were going to ever experience physical death. I read it that they were not going to. That's the way that I interpret that. Mm -hmm. But the consequences of their sin, there's something even greater, mm -hmm. better than that. Yeah. And that is God's grace and the gift of forgiveness. And mm -hmm. those are found in Jesus. Yes. Naomi writes, and my dad was a minister, so I heard that. I bet you did. <laughs> I'm a preacher's kid too, so is Mindy, and um, yeah, I think we all heard that. That's why there's a secret preacher's kids support group. <laughs> we'll send you the login details. So he goes on to talk about the difference between Adam's sin, the consequences, and what Jesus did for us and the consequences of that, because mm -hmm. consequences, they can be good, they can be bad. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. so that's what he's, he's really getting at here. So let's look at verses 16 and 17. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it, will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? Well, Jesus' death was just so powerful. Um, and Adam's sin was, was powerful too, but in a bad way. And so, but Jesus, what Jesus did, that's just going to out to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a reminder of the fallacy of believing that my sin's not going to hurt anybody but myself. Oh, yeah. Because it will it will hurt those around you in the present, mm -hmm. and it tends to, the, the results, the consequences tend to carry over into succeeding generations. Yeah, true. So that's the bad news. But the good news is, so does the love of, of Jesus, mm -hmm. right? So does the yeah. grace that we find in Jesus because of, of what Jesus did. So, mm -hmm. so Jesus answered the consequence of Adam's sin, death, by surrendering himself to death on a cross. Mm. Well, that doesn't sound like a great story until we read what happened yeah. three days later, and that is the resurrection yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, and the final conquering of death which is the supreme penalty for sin. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what do you do with someone who says, well, if that's the case, why do people still die? Well, because this that's a physical death. We're talking about a spiritual spiritual life, life after death. That's what we're talking about. But don't you think physical death was the consequence? Well, but when sin came into the world, we now live in a fallen world. So, you know, things deteriorate and... Um, it just affects everything. So just like when you read in the Bible, what is the lifespan supposed to be? Is it like 120, something like that? 
I read that the other day. Mm. Oh, you're talking about Psalm, like, what is that, Psalm 90? Uh, um, I don't think it's 120. I think it's like 80 or No, there's No, some, there's somewhere in, like, Genesis or Exodus where it was 120. I read that. Do you know anybody that's um, lived to 120? No, what I'm, what I'm saying is I think that in our world with pollution and everything that we have put into this world, that it affects our, our longevity. Mm. I, that's my thinking there because we have polluted and just – Everything is just deteriorating because of that. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I read about a lady that lived to be like 107, and her secret was drinking like a Dr. Pepper <laughs> at the appropriate times every day. Oh, goodness. So, anyway, let's go back to the text here. So, um, even, though the, even though everybody is responsible for themselves, right? The Bible makes that clear. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, the father doesn't bear the guilt of the the child's sin and the child doesn't bear the guilt of the mother's sin. Right. Um, we all bear the guilt for our own sin, but we deal with the consequences of the sin of others. And I think you made a, a point about the world being a fallen place. And, yeah. and we've all had those times when we realize something's just not right here. It, yeah. Something's wrong. Right. So, but what do you do about the scriptures in the Old Testament where God says that he punishes generations afterwards? Like he, he continues to punish them for whatever sin that, because that's also in the Bible. I know that it says that he does not do that in one place, but in another place it does, says that he does do that. Well, you're, I think you're talking about the consequences. Okay, The consequences? So, okay. Yeah, think about um, when Abraham and Sarah got impatient with God and they decided right. to be in control. Yeah. God had promised that they were going to have a son. It wasn't happening. Yeah. So hey, uh, Sarah has this crazy idea to Abraham. She says, mm -hmm. go sleep with my maidservant. Yeah. And I'll have a son through her. And of course, the woman was, was an Egyptian. Her name was Hagar, an Egyptian. That's interesting since the Israelites wound up, the descendants of Abraham were mm -hmm. slaves to the Egyptians. Yeah. But that she has a son named Ishmael. Well, think about this. Mm. Out of the three major religions in the world, the, mm. the Jewish people and Christians, we trace our lineage back to Abraham and Isaac. Mm -hmm. Isaac was Abraham's son. Mm -hmm. Well, Muslims trace their lineage back to Ishmael, mm -hmm. the Palestinians to Ishmael. And, and so yeah. you have the consequences how many mm -hmm. thousands of years that later we're still paying for it. from a decision? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? um, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, Tom, Tom thinks he's going to live to 150 <laughs> if Dr. Pepper is involved. That guy, he drinks Dr. Pepper. <laughs> he drinks so much, I may buy stock in Dr. Pepper. <laughs> okay, so let's look at verses 18 and 19 as we wrap up tonight. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. Yeah. So I really think um, the whole story of the Bible in, is that, you know, where the where Adam and Eve were was called Eden, and Eden was lost because mm -hmm. of what they did. Yeah. And the whole story of the Bible is us um, getting back to Eden, mm -hmm. and and Jesus makes that possible. Mm -hmm. um, Adam and Eve were banished. We are now welcomed back, and and of course you can use Eden metaphorically as referring to to heaven, to the mm -hmm. presence of God. Um, but right. it's it's getting back there, and mm -hmm. it's it's Jesus making making things right again. Everything that was lost, Jesus is the one that makes it right again. And so, one fascinating yeah. thing about the Bible is this beautiful tapestry that's woven throughout, and it, it, it's it's all connected. It's mm -hmm. connected in a beautiful way. Yeah. Um, what was lost, what is now restored. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a beautiful picture of getting back to what God had planned all along. Because he didn't he didn't make a plan B. He had this his plan was all, always there, mm -hmm. you know? So, it was always there to have that relationship with us. So, 
consequences of Adam's sin, consequences of what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And what Jesus did makes us righteous. Going back mm -hmm. to our point from last week, the whole justification, sanctification mm -hmm. thing. It's all made possible because of Jesus. So, hey, as you go out this week, uh, try to live right. Be kind to people. Um, love Jesus. Love other people. And I hope you have a great week. We've got... Um, uh, we've been asked to pray for um, uh, Linda's son, Dennis, who's having surgery in the morning. And so be sure to give us our, your prayer requests. We love to pray for you. Mm -hmm. So you want to pray us out tonight? Yes, I can. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for life and your word and everybody that's listening and watching tonight. I ask that you bless them um, this evening and tomorrow. Please be with Dennis and his surgery tomorrow, and please heal um, everyone at our church that is dealing with different illnesses and cancer. Just please put your hand on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have a great week. Mm -hmm.